Well, praise the Lord. Praise God. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for another opportunity. Praise God. The Lord has given me to come and share with you the Word of God on this Friday, 28. Praise God. 28th day of April, 2023. Praise God. I'm Pastor James A. Dansby of Great Commission Fellowship here in Birmingham, Alabama. Praise God once again declaring to you, to the world, that Jesus Christ is the answer. He's the only answer. Praise God to help us. Praise God in this time of wars and room of the wars, turmoil on every hand. Praise God. He's the only one that can help us uh, through this dilemma. But we do have to put our trust in him. Amen. Praise God. But I hope you're ready to study God's word with me. Praise God on this Friday afternoon. Been a beautiful day. Praise God. Been a beautiful day. And I uh, just thank God for this opportunity that he's given me. Come on, go ahead now. Get your pencils, get your paper, get your pads, and praise God. Let's get ready to take down some scriptures. And praise God, as I say many times, you know, it's, eh, it's not a proper time. It's not the right time to be taking what somebody says to you, God word uh, says. You need to see for yourself. Pray God. Look and see. Pray God for your very self, you know, and, and that's why I encourage you. You know, I know we live in a modern time and, you know, we we, we, we can push the Bibles aside now because, you know, we put scriptures up on the screen so you can see them now. But uh, I think we got to go back to the old landmark and praise God. Open our Bibles. Look at the word of God for ourselves and let the Holy Spirit speak to us, praise God, as he did in time past. Book of James. Now, let's look at the book of James. Uh, we're going to look at that first chapter of the book of James. And uh, praise God, words for meditation on this, praise God, this Friday afternoon. Uh, let's begin reading that 22, James 1, 22. Uh, James says, uh, through inspiration of the Holy Spirit now, through Inspiration to all scripture uh, is, is inspired by God. Praise God. He says here in 22, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, and then goeth his way, and straightway forget it what man of man he was. Hmm? But who's ever looking into the perfect law of liberty, he says in verse 25, and continue it therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the word, this man, praise God, shall be blessed in his deeds. And then he says in verse 26, If any man among you seem to be religious, and brighten not his tongue, but deceive it his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Pure religion, verse 27, pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and the widows in their afflictions, and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Now, let us pray. Father, bless you. We thank you, Lord, for this another opportunity you've given me, Lord, to come on this Friday afternoon, this beautiful day that you made. You've given me this opportunity to come and share your word with your people today. Now, Lord, I pray, Lord, as I go forth and speak that which you place in my heart, I pray you prepare hearts on the other end to hear what thus said the Lord. And then, Lord, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So now, uh, James says here, praise God, the Lord's brother here says here in that uh, verse 22, he says, but be ye doers of the word. Pray God. All scripture given by inspiration of God. Profitable for reproof. Praise God. And, and, and But now, Christ speaks through James here, and he says that we are to be doers of the word. We are to be doers of the word. That's why it's Christ's word uh, to us today. Praise God. It's not enough to know the word, but we must be doers of the word. And this is part one. Now, this is going to be part one of two. We'll do two 
uh, sections on this uh, uh, study here. And this is just part one now. Christ says, be doers of the word. Now, the Apostle James now, praise God, the Lord's brother, he's calling upon the believers uh, to examine um, their profession of faith, to kind of look closely at who you say and that you are, who you, whom you say that you belong to. Uh, examine uh, your profession of faith. Because uh, uh, James, he, he's aware of how widespread self-deception is among professing Christians of his day, praise God, and certainly, praise God, it's the same today. Uh, well, let me take that back. It's worse today. Some self-deception. People have deceived, uh, are being deep, being deceived, and people are deceiving themselves today. And it is astronomically, I mean, it's just out of this world. Praise God. But now, in this chapter, James, uh, he, he's describing two, two different people and their reaction, praise God, to the word of God. Two, two people now and how they react to the word of God. Now, the first person, hypothetically, probably, maybe grew up in church. Let's say he grew up in church, the first person. Uh, he studied the Bible, he or she, whatever the case might be now, uh, even memorizing portions of the word of God. Hmm? For this person seemed to be a godly, very godly person. But in public, he acts like everybody else. Hmm? In other words, he's unaffected. He's unaffected by the word of God. It has no real impact upon his personal life. Oh, yes. He's religious. Yes, of course. He's religious. Huh? But he's also self-deceived. Hmm? His faith is kin to, praise God, that of the uh, demonic spirits that, praise God, are mentioned throughout the Bible uh, in uh, the book of Acts and, and, and Mark 3. Let's look at Mark 3. See, when you're just religious, though, which is how a lot of people should be and could be classified today, you uh, go to church, you read your Bible occasionally, uh, but now you, your, your faith is kin to that of the demonic spirits. Mark 3. Look at Mark 3 now. Write it down. Write it down. Mark 3. Praise God. And it says in Mark 3, 11. Let's look at 11 verse there. And unclean spirits, when they saw him, talking about Jesus now, when they saw Jesus, they fell down before him and cried, saying, Thou art the Son of God. Hmm? The unclean spirits. See, they knew. They knew he was. They knew that Jesus was the Lord of Lord. They knew he was. They knew exactly who he was. But they would not serve him. Hmm? They would not honor him. No, 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 no. They would not obey him. Praise God. And see, uh, 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 the, the, these demonic spirits, they were just hearers of the word only. Hmm? Praise God. Now remember now, we, we, uh, James is showing us two different people here. Uh, one, hears the word only. And the other one, he's a doer of the word of God. Amen. But now the second person, uh, he, he attends place of worship, praise God, also maybe. He reads the Bible in his private time, a second person. He talks to others about the Bible. He witnesses during his daily walk. He's constantly looking for an opportunity to tell somebody how good the Lord is and what the Lord has done. But in times of trouble, he goes to the Bible, huh? not to the psychiatrist, hmm? not to Madam X down on the highway there with her crystal ball. No, no. He goes to the Bible and there he see what God says uh, in dealing with his situation. Praise God. He wants to live holy. This second person now, he wants to live holy, he or she, uh, to live for Christ. That's right. And to show compassion. Got a compassionate heart for those who are less fortunate than himself. In other words, in other words he's a doer of the word. This person is a doer of the word. Now, these two individuals represents two reactions to the word of God. Two reactions. Hmm? The word of God always demands response. Always demands some type of response. Hmm? Either a response of obedience and submission or, praise God, a response of disobedience. Praise God in defiance, just plain old defiance against God's word. See, there's no in-between here. 
Jesus said, you either for me or you against me. Huh? Praise God. Well, my question to you, uh, as we look at uh, this, uh, these two people here and their response, how have you responded? How have you responded to God's word? Hmm? You either in one of these categories here. Now, the Apostle James, he exhorts the believers to be doers of the word hmm? and not just hearers. Hmm? Praise God. Let's look back at James 1. Go back to James 1. We're going to run back up to 18. Uh, we'll go back up to James 1, 18. Uh, James, he exhorts believers now to be doers of the word, not just hearers. Look what he says here in 18, 1, 18, of his own will, talking about the Lord here, he begat us. He begat us. He begat, begat he us with the word of truth. How did we, how did he get us? How was I born again? Through the word, through the word of truth, that we should be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Hmm? Praise, praise God. James, James says here basically that we are saved and we are born again by the power of the word of God, the word of God. Amen. That's basically what he's saying. See, now, it's the gospel. It is the gospel message that is revealed in God's word that saves us. It regenerates us. Yes, it does. Praise God. And eventually draws us to Christ where we fellowship with him. Praise God. That's the word of God. Well, look at look at uh, James 1 and going down to 21 there. Going down to 21 now. And 21, uh, he says, wherefore, well, lay apart all filthiness and uh, superfluity uh, of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Hmm? The engrafted word, able to save your soul. Now see, here James described the manner in which we are to receive God's word. Hmm? With meekness, he says. Meek, receive with meekness, praise God, and, and with purity. Hmm? Not filthiness, but purity. Hmm? Now, but his main message, James' main message here to the believers is that there are those who hear the word only. Mm -hmm. And then there are those who hear the word and do the word. Mm. And today we're just looking at part one. We're looking at part one. We just want to look at those who hear the word only. We want to take a look at it and, and, and we want to examine ourselves and see where are we? Where are we when it comes to uh, the proper response to the, the word of God? Amen. Look again, James 1.22 now. Look back at where we started at James 1.22. He says, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, hmm? deceiving your own selves. Hmm. See, now, now, now James is by, he by no means condemning those who just hear the word. No, no, he's not. I mean, th those who hear the word. I mean, he's not condemning those that hear the word or just maybe occasionally read the word. But now, because he realized, James realized that the first step toward salvation is to hear the word. That's the first step. You got to hear the word. See, but now the problem arises, though, when that is all we do, just hear the word. That's when the problem, when that's all we do. Hmm? He wants us to read. The Bible uh, encourages us to study to show ourselves to prove unto God. So we need to read. But the problem is when we just read and just hear, sit up on Sundays on in the in the church service and just hear the word, and the word never really have an impact upon our daily lives. Hmm? Never, never penetrating and affecting our hearts in our actions. Hmm? Faith without works, it's what? It's dead, praise God. There got to be some, a corresponding action if you say that you really have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. But now, Christ is saying through James here now, through James, that it is possible to attend church. It's possible to sit up on in, in church on a Sunday or Wednesday and, and listen to the word of God and or maybe on uh you know with some gospel message on your on your TV, the podcast, or whatever the case might be. And and it's it's possible to read your Bible and pray daily. It's possible and still be classified as a hearer only. Hmm? Usually 
these hearers only, they listen to and they read the word of God. Uh, you know, they read for just to obtain information, just to obtain information uh, or to critique or and, and compare what they read with what others are preaching, what they read, what they hear, and they want to compare with what somebody else is saying. And, and but, that, but the right way to approach God's word, the right way now, is with meekness. That's what, that's, what, that's what James said. With meekness and humbleness and with a submissive heart. Pray God, a submissive heart. That's the right way. Amen. But now, the hearer of the word only has no intentions. None. Zero. No intentions of submitting to God's word. Hmm? But he's proud. He or she, they're proud, self-assured. And actually, James said they are self-deceived. They have deceived themselves. But now, let's look at verse 23. James 1, and we're going to look at 23 there. James 1 and 23. He says in 23, For if any man be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For he beholds himself, verse 24, then he goeth his way, and straightway forget, forget it, what manner of man he was. Hmm? Praise God. Now, 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 James here gives us an illustration, an illustration of a hearer of the word only. Hmm? Praise God. He says the word of God is like a mirror. That's what he, the word of God is like a mirror. When I open my Bible up, I'm, I'm looking into a mirror. That's what James said, a mirror, which when people, uh, when you open your Bible and look into your Bible, uh, or, or basically when we look at a mirror, when we look at a mirror, what do we see? We see ourselves, don't we? Yeah, we see ourselves. Huh? Exactly what we really look like. Uh, Basically, I'm, I'm going to say basically. <laughs> but when we listen to and read God's word now, hmm, the image, the mirror of God's word now, the image that one will first see is that of a sinner. Hmm? That's what the Bible shows you now. The mirror of God's word going to show you that you are a sinner and you are in need of a savior. Hmm? I'm talking when you look in God's word. And that Savior is none other than, praise God, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Praise God. But, you know, there is a saying, an old saying a long time ago. I don't know where, how this, where it originated or who said it, but um, uh, old saying it goes something like this here. Uh, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? Hmm? And the image and the mirror answer, you are. Hmm? Praise God. But now, when we look into the mirror of God's word, the first face you're going to see is that of a sinner. Hmm? When you look at God's word, the first voice that you're going to hear it will, it's not going to tell you how good you are. Oh, no. Praise God. It's not going to tell you uh, how blessed you are. Oh, no. The voice you'll hear when you look into the mirror of God's word is that all have sinned. When you first look at it, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's the, that's the voice. The picture you're going to see is a sinner. Hmm? And the boy said, that's not righteous. No, not one. Oh, yes. That's what you're going to hear. That's what you're going to see. You're going to see a sinner and a boy saying that you are the man. Huh? See, this is the first voice. Now, listen to me now. The first voice that an unsaved person will hear. If you're unsaved now and you're reading your Bible, this is what you're going to hear unless you're going to forget and you're going to see, see what you want to see deceiving your own self. Mm. But now the first voice, again, the first voice, say for instance, you said now reading God's word, you're not saved. You're not saved. You're, or you're in doubt as to your salvation, which is, you know, equal to probably being, not being saved, you know. But now the first voice that an unsaved person will hear, hmm, praise God, and the proper response uh, to that voice is is that that person go uh, 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 go come under conviction? The response to that voice that say all have sinned come short of the glory of God is to bring forth conviction, huh? Conviction, then repentance, praise God, and then salvation. Uh, pray, let, let, let me say that again. Now, the first voice, 
I'm, 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 look, I'm talking about a person now. Here you are. You send down. You, you exploring the word of God. You're not saved. You, 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 you hope you are. You hope you might be, but you have no blessed assurance though. Okay. So now when you look in God's word, you're going to look into the mirror, right? You're looking at the mirror. Huh? Praise God. And, 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 and the word of God is going to say to you, knowing that you do not know the Lord, he going to tell you that you are a sinner. Now, that's what God's word going to tell you now. Okay, the enemy might try to tell you something else, but God's word going to tell you that you are a sinner. That's the first voice you're going to hear. Hmm? And, 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 the, and the, he wants you to respond by, uh, uh, with the conviction of your sin that you are a sinner. Confess your sins and praise God, repent of your sins and, and receive God's great salvation. That's what the word of God, uh, is intended to do. But now, but, 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 but only, is only if we are reading or hearing the pure word of God. Hmm? Only if we're hearing. When you sit up in church on Sunday, because a lot of stuff that's being preached is not God's word. You can bet that. It's not God's word. huh? And I tell you what, it's going to show you a lot of things about yourself that's not true. And you're going to be deceived. You're definitely going to be deceived. Amen. So now, uh, uh, the, the pure word of God is not being preached in all of our congregations. Hmm? Praise God. The word that we hear uh, on uh, podcasts or whatever is not the pure word of God. Huh? Praise God. Most of it is just motivational speeches, really. Feel good. Feel good word. Uh, feel good. Make you feel good. That's what most of the false prophets are giving people today because it is profitable for the false prophets when they tell you that you are looking good when the Bible says there's none good. No, not one. Praise God. But now, these, 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 this false word is going forth in our poor pits. And like I say, these, these false prophets are multiplying like rabbits today. I don't, I, every time I turn, every time I look on a, on, on a YouTube, on, uh, there's a new one coming up. Praise God. Leading souls astray every day. But let me say, when you hear the pure word of God, or you sit down and read God's word, Praise God. God will, first of all, if you're not saved, he's going to tell you that you are a sinner. That's no other conversation. That's no other conversation. That's no other revelation. No other enlightenment that God wants to bring to you until you are saved. Hmm? Praise God. You can't put meat on the bone until you get the bone. Huh? The dead body got to be raised. Dry bones, first of all, got to raise them up. Then you can put the meat on them, but you got to be saved first. But now, with the hearers of the word only again now. James says, even after hearing the word and reading the word, in your private time, uh, many of them will go away. They go their way, straight way, forgetting, 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 forgetting of what manner of man they are. Looked at it and walk away and forget. Hmm? Forgetting the image of a sinner in need of a savior that the scripture has shown them very plainly. They forget, they walk away. Praise God. To see, to, to an unsaved person, as you read the Bible now, as you hear a true gospel message, I, I got to say this again now, the Holy Spirit will show you your sins. You're not ready for anything else. What else can you take in until, first of all, you acknowledge and confess your sins? So this is what he's going to show you, first of all. Praise God. Hmm? Then, yo, yo, I mean, he shows us all the spots and the blemishes. Praise God, all our shortcomings. <laughs> He's just running, the Lord shows. Uh, in other words, our true state of being, not what we have fabricated ourselves, or what the enemy has shown us to be. The Holy Spirit will show you the true self, your true self, and then the remedy. He shows you the remedy for uh, I'll send sickness. Yes, he does. Praise God. That's not other than the Lord Jesus Christ. Praise God. I like what Paul, I like what the apostle Paul uh, uh, said when he, uh, praise God, realized that he was a sinner. He, when God, the Holy Spirit showed him he was the chief sinner, he said, oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body? Oh, God, this body of death. That's Romans 7, somewhere in that neighborhood, Romans 7. Praise God. But now the word of God shows us our sins. Hmm? It shows up our sins. And this will always, always, listen to me. I said, this will always be the first interaction between a sinner and the word of God. 
if the word of God is being preached. If you're reading the word of God, the first interaction is going to be, he's going to show you that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Yes, that's first base there. That's first base. See, when a saved person reads the word, praise God, if, if, if a saved person, now, if a saved person, he already saved now, when a saved person reads the word, if he or she has no unrepentant sin in their life, Huh? Then the Holy Spirit, through the Word of God, He He encourage him. He gonna encourage him. He encourages us when we have no unrepented sins in our lives. He will encourage us. Praise God. Then He'll direct us. He'll lead and guide us. And then He'll mature us. He'll grow us. That is, if we have already been saved. Amen. But if you are unsaved, you're not ready. For no encouragement, praise God. First of all, you got to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Praise God. But now, in a person that is a hearer only, the Word of God will always first convict him. Yes. Hmm? It'll convict you. That's right. That's right. Not encourage you. Hmm? Not try to grow you. Ain't, ain't, ain't nothing to grow yet. You don't want to grow your sins. huh? Praise God. But he's going to convict you first. Then he's gonna accuse you, accuse you. Praise God. He never, he never, he never excuse you. He accuse you. Praise God. That's what he does. Amen. But now, there will be nothing. And I need to say this real plainly because, you know, I, I understand people want to be blessed. I understand that. I understand that. I understand that. But now, if you are, if you're not saved, then the Holy Spirit. It's not talking to you about any blessings. Oh no! Oh no! You don't. You don't. You don't. You don't uh, play baseball and 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 you bat to hit the ball and then run from first base to third base. No, you don't do that. You know better than that. You got to go to first base, right? Huh? So now there'll be nothing said to you if you aren't saved right now. And I know preachers don't. Uh, they don't tell you. They they just pass out blessings like it's candy. They just pass out. Everybody get a blessing. Doesn't matter where you stand with God. Doesn't matter whether you're saved or unsaved. Honey, I see a blessing. God got a blessing for you, honey. I can see it. I can see it. No, no. He he he, he don't see nothing. Huh? If you're not saved, praise God. If you're not saved, if you're saved and you're living in sin, you're not repent of your sin, ain't no blessing there either. Praise God. There's nothing going to be said about blessings and healings. Hmm. We hear a lot of that today. Healing. God, God going to heal you, honey. Oh, yes. I see. I see God break, raising you up. Oh, I see prosperity. Hmm. I see a blessing coming in the mail for you, honey. Let me tell you something. Listen to me now. Huh? That's not the Holy Spirit. If you're unsaved, the Holy Spirit don't speak that to you. Huh? You got to first know the Lord. You got to first see in the word, the mirror of God's word, you got to see your true self. Huh? And that you are, 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 are out of fellowship. You are not in fellowship with the Lord at all. Praise God. And he'll show you that. Because a lot of people like uh, James said, they look and see and uh, walk away and forget. Forget what the word of God is trying to tell them about their lifestyle. Hmm? Just forget completely. But now, uh, no blessings, no healings, hmm? well, no prosperity. But now, I, uh, there are providential blessings now. The sunshine on the, the good and evil alike. Is that what the Bible says? Huh? So now, there are what we call providential things that happen in our lives that we call blessings, but I'm talking about a blessing from the Lord through the power of the Holy Spirit that comes through God's, to God's people. Amen. God's people. Hmm? See, it's not meat to take the children's bread. Jesus said these words and give them to dogs. Hmm? So you, you got to be a child of God. First of all, hmm? That's what the Word of God teaches. But uh, but today we hear a lot of blessings. And that's what I, I have to hop on that because a lot of people are deceived. James talked about people being self-deceived, being deceived by the false prophets, and then deceiving yourself because you know, God spoke to you and told you exactly what you need to do, but you walk away. Just like you forget, he says, and forget what you really, really, really look like. Hmm? We need to repent. Hmm? See, the first step is repent. Hmm? 
Praise God. But sadly, like I say, many today walk away. They walk away after hearing the true word of God. Now, and most of what we're hearing in the pulpit is, is not true word of God. I, I'm sorry, but it's not. It's not. It's feel good. Huh? It's giving you a promotion when you don't even deserve a promotion, telling you that you're going to have this and you're going to have that. Praise God. Many, praise God, like the Bible, like James said, they, they look into the mirror of God's word and they see what they want to see and not what the spirit of the Lord is saying to them. Hmm? They see a lying image, what they see when they look into God's word. They see a lying image of themselves. Actually, right. Rather than that which the, the word truthfully show them. Huh? Praise God. So many people today. And it's sad. It's sad in my heart to know that, to see how many deceived people there are that sit upon the word of God. Because hmm? the man of God is not preaching the word of God. Or whoever it is, they're not preaching the word of God. They're passing out blessings. Sweet stuff. You know, make you feel good stuff. Hmm? But now the hearer only does not see his sins. No. No. Hmm? He does not see it. He's got a way of dismissing it, even when the word of God is being preached. Hmm? He does not see Christ as the one way to be forgiven of our sins. They don't see that. Hmm? They may remember a few scriptures. They got a few scriptures in their heart. Yes. But if the word does not produce action, hmm? the word of God, when we receive it, it changes us. God knows it changes us. Hmm? But there's no action though. Hmm? Then that person has forgotten what God tried to show him through the word of God. He actually forgot what you really look like. A sinner. Faith without works. Action is dead, the Bible says. Look at James 1.26. Now we, we're getting ready to wind him up here. Look at James 1.26 there. Uh, 126. He said, if any man among you seem to be religious, watch it now, seem to be, seem to be. And not and brighter not his tongue, hmm? but deceive it his own heart. This man religion is vain. Hmm? Praise God. James says here a hearer of the word only is suffering from self deception. He deceives his own heart. Hmm? He hears the word but does not practice or live the word. Listen. Yes, I know, I know, I know. We heard it all our lives. I heard it too. Uh, just go to church, honey. You need to go to church and pray, baby. You just need to pray and then read your Bible. Hmm? Then all going to be well with you. Just do these things now. But James says uh, <laughs> that ain't necessarily correct. Hmm? You can be deceived. Huh? You can do all this. Read and still be deceived. My brother, praise God, Tony Green. Tony Green says all the time that... Um, being saved uh, come with some act right. Yes. Compels you to act right. A different lifestyle. Hmm? Otherwise, your faith is dead. Praise God. And your religion, praise God, is worthless. It's worthless. Let us remember that we are born again through the word of God. That's what James said. We're born again through the word of God. It is how we become part of the kingdom of God. It is how we grow. It is through which we grow, what we grow. We grow through the word of God. We mature through the word of God. Even in the midst of our trials and tribulation, the more, praise God, it was said of the Israelites, the more they persecuted them, the more they grew. Hallelujah. Through the word of God. But now as I close for today, and I like I said, this first part, this is just part, first part. We just kind of skimming over uh, those who are just, Hearers only today. But the bottom line is that you who say you're a Christian, if you say you're a Christian right now, today, but you're just a hearer only, then you're not saved. That's the bottom line. You're not saved. And if you die at this very moment, yes, in your sin, you're going to join the millions of other deceived souls who are waiting judgment day right now. Hmm? Praise God. See, this deception is so great in our churches today. It saddens my heart. It truly saddens my heart to see so many people uh, uh, buy that wooden nickel, as we say. Hmm? So many people to see. Praise God. But it's my prayer. It is my prayer that you will not just hear the word of God, but be doers of the word. Hmm? Praise God. And I pray that the, uh, the next time you hear God's word, praise God, and, and next time you read God's word, I, I pray that it, it'll pierce your heart. Praise God, to the extent where you will see yourself as God 
portrays you as God has given you the clear picture of yourself. Praise God. Mm. I pray he'll pierce your heart. And then he talked about brightening the tongue and then you'll, you'll talk different. Mm? Praise God. He, your tongue, your tongue, your conversation will change. Mm? You don't talk the way you used to talk. Mm? Foolishness? No. No foolishness. No, 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 no. Huh? You talk wholesome talk. Talk that lifts up the name of Jesus. A holy conversation is what we, that's what the Bible, that's what God asks for. A holy conversation. After we set on the God's word, it ought to make us more holy. Hmm? That's the same word. Praise God. Let us pray. Father, I bless you today. I thank you for your word, Lord. I pray, Lord, that your word have reached forth and touched the hearts of that person that might just be a, a hearer of the word only today. Lord God, speak to their heart right now. And Lord, I'll be so mindful to give you all the praise. I give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Pray God now. If you receive this word, praise God. If you receive this word, it's from the Lord. Just for you. Tell me. Just for you. Just for you. Just for you. If God has drawn you to this word today, then this word is for you. And if he, if you receive it today, help me spread this word. Huh? Help me spread this word to those around you. Praise God. Tell them. Tell them about the Lord's word. Tell them where they can go and they can hear the true word of God. Praise God. And go over, hit that like button over there. Hit that like button over there. Then hit that subscribe button. And uh, we're going to come back with part two. The final part, part two. And uh, I, I, I'm, I'm asking God to let me, let me, after you sit down on Sunday afternoon, let me give you the rest of it. What a doer of the word of God really, really looks like. Praise God. But until that time, may God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Amen.